what are the five most common GarageBand iOS questions that I get asked in the comments of my videos? Let's jump here into GarageBand and take a look because GarageBand is one of those things that is kind of like Texas Hold'em poker. It takes a, a minute to learn and a lifetime to master. So there's a lot of things in here that when you're a beginner or when you're an intermediate user, you may not know, or even if you do know, you may not know that there's maybe a better way to tackle it. Number one, how do I add more bars and sections? Now, this is 100% the most common question that I get because GarageBand doesn't make it easy to see how you actually extend this. We're like, oh, we've got eight bars here, right? How do we get more than eight bars? Go to my settings, uh, there's my tempo, there's my time signature, there's my key. Uh, uh, how do I add more? Well, guess what? It's in the most obvious location, of course. It is this tiny plus button over here. This is what we tap on. Now, I know many of you already know this, but there's a few things that we can talk about with this. So we tap that plus button, and then we can change the length of this section. So say instead of eight bars, we actually wanted this to be 16 bars. We can come in here and we can tap this. Now, a tip for young players is if you tap and hold, you can actually drag up and drag down. So don't sit there doing, if you need 64 bars, don't do any of this business. Just tap on the number and drag up or down. So we'll go there, 16 bars. And then when we tap out of there, boom, we've now got 16 bars. Now with your virtual instruments, this is why I wanted a bunch of different tracks here. You'll see your virtual instruments just loop for the whole way through. If you don't want that, all you need to do is bring that loop back like that and do the same with that one. But we'll undo and we'll undo because we do want them there. If you want to loop these ones, well, yep, we can just tap this one and tap it again and hit the loop button. No, we can't. No, it's in the settings here. Settings looping. Why is that not working? <laughs> it's made a mockery of the whole thing. Is this gonna work if I loop this one? Looping is on. That's 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 strange. Uh, there you go. Apparently that doesn't loop. I thought, that's, I thought that would work. I thought it would let me loop. Uh, okay, well what we'll do is we'll just copy it and we'll paste it in another version. <laughs> There you go. If anyone has any tips for me as to why that's not working, uh, let me know because that's a bit, bit weird. We'll see if that happens the same way later on. Might have found a new bug in the latest GarageBand version. But there you go. Now we've got this 16 bars. Now there's other things you can do here. If we tap back on the little plus button and go to our little hidden section, we can duplicate that section. So now we've got two 16 bar sections and we can even add a fresh section. And you'll see that it'll default to eight bars. Again, if you want to change it, we tap the I button there and we can change it to however many bars we want. Let's just go 24 bars. Now you'll notice, <coughs> now you'll notice that there's an automatic button there as well. So you can actually set automatic and that's good if you're just recording for the first time. You can just have automatic and then the section will be as long as however long you record. So uh, keep that in mind as well there. Now when you're viewing your sections, if you tap on one, so we go section B here and come back out, you'll see that we're only getting that one section. So if you wanna see your whole track, this is something that traps some people. We need to tap all sections here and we come back to all of them there. You can see we've got Darcy there. See, why has Darcy been added to that new blank section but the bass hasn't? It's a, weird, it's a weird difference between the drummer and the bass track that we have there. So there's your sections. To delete them again, you can just come here and we can tap that one and uh, actually delete them by swiping. You can't see my swipe action, but we swipe to the left and there's a little delete thing there. So swipe to the left and then you can tap the delete. So let's just get rid of this little eight bar one, delete that and it's gone. And again, to view all your sections, tap all sections, tap off here and there you go. How do we loop just one section? So say we're recording along with this. Let's just say that we wanted to record a cool keyboard part to just this first section, but we want to try, we want to do a few takes on it because we're not really confident in ourselves. So what we can do, let's come in here, we'll add a keyboard. Let's just find like an organ or something cool that might go along with this track, a bit of a door style track that we've got going on here. So I'll come back here, we'll turn this organ up and we'll turn the other tracks down a little bit just so that we can hear it while we're recording. Now, what you could do is just be in this mode, but then when you record, what's going to happen is it's just going to get to the end of here and that's it it's going to keep going through here but what if we want to view one loop well all we need to do is come in here and select the section we want so say we want section a then we can come here and it's going to give us just section a now what i'm going to do is just to make this more convenient let's just bring the section back down to say four bars just so that we can do this and there you go we've got the first four bars of this and we've now got a four bar section and then a 16 bar section here so if we come over here and we get ready to record all right, so we'll hit the record button and we'll record in and uh, let's just watch what happens here. All 
right, so it's gone through twice there, yeah? We've recorded through twice. And there you go, we've got our recording there. Now there's a couple of options that we have in here for when we're recording and when we're looping here. If we come in here and we go to track settings and recording, you'll see we've got multi-take and merge recordings. Now without any of those, what you'll notice is that when I played it the second time, it just kept recording. It just records straight over the top. But we can actually change how that works. Let's undo that recording. Let's turn merge recordings on, shall we? And uh, I'll hit record here and we'll record with our merge recordings function and I'll show you what happens. And that will continue looping and recording forever. Here's the thing it does. It brings it together. <laughs> so every time we play a second note, it's actually going to bring them together. So every time we play another note that's not the original note, it's going to record that over the top. And uh, we get... We get interesting sounds like that. Not exactly what you'd want for this one, but it's an option. If you're recording something, especially drums, if you want to layer drums, so say you want to record the kick drum, and then you want to immediately loop and play the snare, and then immediately loop and play the hi-hat, you can do that, and you can build up your track. And of course, you don't have to just loop it. You can pause in between, work out your part, and do the next bit. The other thing we've got, if we turn merge recordings off, we've got multi-take. So if we undo that again, multi-take will do it a different way. So let's see how multi-take works when we're recording this loop. So we hit record, and once again, we forgot to unsolo. <laughs> but you'll get the point. So this time, it's actually re-recording that over and over and over again. And when we pop out here, you'll see we've got this little number two there. We can now switch between these takes using the multi-take feature. So we can go back to that first take that we did that sounded like this. Let's see how, let's see how on the grid Pete can be without his metronome. Not good. So we're like, oh, I didn't like that first take. What, what did I play on that second take? Let's try that one. Tap takes, go to take two and then come back here and play it. Yeah, pretty handy feature. So they're the two ways that you can do loop recordings. You're either gonna overwrite the original one by having nothing on here. You are going to merge your recordings together, meaning that every time you play, it'll add to the original recording, or you are going to use multi-take recording. Now, if you're recording here on this track, on an audio track, you'll notice you've only got multi-take. The reason for that is it'll always overwrite. So it's only a MIDI track or a virtual track that you have that merge recordings option on. If you're using an audio recorder track, you can use multi-take but you can't use the merge recording. So there you go. If you've ever wanted to get that face-melting guitar solo just right and play it again and again, using something like the multi-take might be a good option for you there. And if you wanted to build up some chords or build up some drum parts using your MIDI tracks, then maybe consider the multi-take. This one confused a lot of folks when they first started using GarageBand, and that is why do we have two different reverbs and echoes in GarageBand? Well, I'm going to tell you why. And it's actually a legacy feature. So originally, way back when, GarageBand version 2.0 came out and it only had master effects. So we didn't have any of this business. We didn't have the plugins and EQ. We didn't have AUV3 plugin support. We didn't have visual EQ. We didn't have external plugins. We didn't have a lot of things. All we had were these sections here. We had a single knob compressor. We had a treble and we had a bass. So we had very basic EQ settings. And then we had these, master echo and master reverb. So on each track, so let's just, uh, let's solo a track here. We'll go with, um, oh look, I did some weird thing and recorded over there. Uh, we'll go with this track up the top here. So this is a guitar track. Yep. So we'll turn that one up just so that we can hear it. So what we could do in the past is that all we could do is do a basic compression. So if we want a little compression on this guitar, turn up the compressor. We had some basic EQ controls. So say we wanted to boost some treble. And maybe we wanted to cut a little bass. 
we could do that. And we also have the master effects. Now master effects, you can add some echo. So if we hit this one. That kind of sounds cool. <laughs> and we had some reverb, so we can throw in some reverb. And that's all we had. GarageBand was a very simple application. We didn't have anything apart from that. What happened in GarageBand version 2.1 is that we got the plugins and EQ, and that changed things around a bit. But because we wanted backwards compatibility, what Apple did is they left all this business here. So if you ever wonder why you've got this little sort of simplified version out here, and then you can come in here and change it all up, well, it's because of this. So what happens when you use the compressor here and the treble and bass here is it actually changes it in here. So what you're doing is, see how it's changed the compression threshold? It's up the ratio. It's added in compression here based on what we've done. So if we turn this compressor way up, let's come out here. You can see the threshold's gone down and we've got more compression going on there. If we come back and we reduce the compressor, come back to here, look at that, the threshold's gone way down. So that, if you've ever wondered, like, what is this doing and why is it separate? It's just controlling that compressor. Same with our treble and bass. Just for, uh, let's just boost the treble and reduce the bass, and we go to plugins and EQ, and we go to the visual EQ, that's what it's done, yeah? It's just given us a boost around 5K, and it's given us a cut at 200 hertz. So that is what those simplified controls are doing. Now, back to the original question, why do we have echo and reverb here? Well, it's because it was all that we had, but these don't link to anything else. So we do have some track effects now. Difference being that these ones here, if we tap on this master effects little arrow here, we can change the type of echo we get. So one that I like to use a lot is a quarter note echo. So we'll tap quarter note echo for our echo. A reverb, we can change this one. So let's go with like a large hall reverb here. Now, once we've made these master effects, what you'll notice is when you go to each of your other tracks, they're exactly the same. So you can't change, you can't have say a half note on this organ and then go a quarter note on your guitar. Once you set it with the master, you gotta use it for all of them. So keep that in mind with your master effects. Now, what if say I wanted a quarter note on this guitar, but these drums, I wanted an eighth note. So we want two different types of echo. Well, in that case, we wouldn't use our master effects. We'll turn those off. We're gonna use our track effects. And this is where GarageBand now, 2.3.10 or whatever version you're running or in the future is so much better because we can come in here and we can actually go to edit our plugins and we can add and let's add in, whoop, we're right here in effects, let's add in a track echo. So the reason it's called track echo is it's to make sure you're not confused with the track echo and the master echo. And you can see here, we've got a whole bunch more controls. So you've got your dry wet knob there. You've got how much repeat you get. You've got the coloring there so you can adjust the EQ of it. And we can, again, we can have a quarter note delay on this one. So let's play this with our quarter note delay. So that's cool, yeah? We've got a quarter note delay. And now if we want these drums to have an eighth note delay, we can come and do the same thing. We can come in here, we can add this one, go to our track echo, and this time we want to dial in an eighth note. So then our drums can have this. Bring them together. So there you go. That is why we have two different places for plugins. You've got your legacy section here. And to be honest, I still use these quite a bit. Uh, it can be really cool on a final mix to just put a little bit of the same reverb. So a little bit of like a whole reverb on every track can kind of glue your mix together. So I still do use these master effects, but more often than not, you want to jump in here and use your track effects in GarageBand. So there you go. The number three question has been answered. What are these buttons? What's this red and orange button all about? Why would you use them? Why are they there? So when you start out with GarageBand, you will probably see something like this. You won't even see anything there. You'll just be playing around with your tracks. You'll be adding things in. You'll be like, oh, okay, cool. I want to add some drums. And you come in here and you, you roll the dice on this one. And you're recording, oh, you're recording some beat sequencer. Why not? and you're away, you're having fun, yeah? You're mixing things together. You'll very quickly learn that if you pull out this panel, so if you tap on this little handle here and drag to the right, like so, that you're gonna get all these here. You're gonna get all these volume controls here. You're also gonna get your mute and your solo. So most folks know how these all work. You can solo each track, you can mute individual tracks. <coughs> Excuse me, frog in my throat today. So you can do that. 
The other things you might notice here, though, you probably don't have these when you're first starting out because unless you're doing multi-track recording, you won't have these. And the reason that you have these is if you've got an audio interface connected, so I'm using a Steinberg UR22C, you can use a Focusrite Scarlett 2i2, a iRig Pro Duo, there's a bunch of different interfaces, you can actually do multi-track recording. So if we tap on the settings here and go to our advanced settings, you want to turn this on, multi-track recording. And depending what you've got plugged in, sometimes even without an interface, this will actually show up your, your options. So if we come in here, the reason we've got this is, say we're, we've got our interface plugged in, because we do, and we've got a guitar in, into input two and a mic in input one, and we want to record these both at the same time. Here's how it works. So we tap on the plus button here. We come to, say we want to use an amp simulator. So we'll go here. We'll say, yeah, we want a clean guitar amp sim. There you go. We'll go to our, um, our input here. And what we want to do is say, we want this on channel two. So our guitar is coming into channel two. Cool. That's all set up. We then want to record a vocal and our vocal mic over here, here we go, we'll take audio recorder, voice, our vocal mic happens to be in channel one. So we'll make sure that we've got input one. Now never choose stereo, by the way, unless it is a stereo signal. I had a question during the week from someone saying, why is my microphone always on the left? Uh, it, it's because if you've selected stereo, it'll record input one onto the left channel and input two onto the right channel. So if you've got nothing in input two, it's just gonna record your mic on the left channel. So never use stereo unless you've got a stereo source. So input one for that one. Now, if we come back out here, you'll see that we have these two tracks set up. And if I just have this one selected, so say I've got my guitar plugged in, I don't, but if we hit record now, it's gonna give us a count in. I'm rocking out with my guitar. I'm doing my thing. Uh, it's not recording anything, so it's not plugged in, but it's only going to record that one track. But what if I want to sing and play guitar at the same time? Let's just undo. If I want to do that, what I need to do is actually select this record light because now you can see that it'll actually record both tracks at once. It'll record my guitar and my mic using the two different channels. If we now hit record, you can see we've got a little number two there. And look what's happening. And you know what's super cool about this? you get to actually record on this screen. Yeah, it doesn't drop you over to the other screen. So when we only had the one track recording, we turned that light off, we had the one track recording, we were getting this screen, which I hate, because you can't see where your track is. But the beauty part of having the two different ones, just undo that, of having two tracks, is that you can see the screen. Now, I use this technique even when I'm only recording one track. I'll just set up a dummy track and actually just record here so that I can view my entire GarageBand screen while I'm recording. It's a good little tip if you've got a multi-channel interface so that you can see what the heck you're doing. Now, the final thing is, what are these lights? What are these uh, orange lights here? Well, these are your monitor. So if you've recorded, so say we've got our, our microphone here. If we go into here, you'll notice that you can turn your monitoring on and off in the bottom corner here. So you've got your channel set up, you're ready to record. Monitoring just means that you'll hear it back through the software as you're recording. Now you can also use latency-free monitoring on your interface. So if you turn that on, turn this off. But if you want to monitor with your effects, your reverb, your delay, your compression, you want to turn this on and you also want to turn your monitoring off on your interface. So you should always have only one. Otherwise, you're going to get some echo effect and some latency and some delay because you're not going to hear them exactly in sync and in time. So keep that in mind. So monitor off, monitor on. And what you'll notice here is with this one off, when we come back out to here, what is this orange light doing? It's off. We turn this orange light on, this connects to our monitor option down here. It's now said that that's on. And the same with our guitar. Guitar is in a slightly different location, but if we do monitor on here and we go into our guitar amp, what you'll notice is when we go to our little jack plug here, we've got monitor on. If we turn it off, guess what? We come back to here and where's our monitor light? It is off. So that is what that's all about. So if you want to hear both of those, you want to record both tracks, you want to hear both of them, you'd have both of those lights on. If you're only recording one, then you make sure that you turn the other one off. And if you say only want to hear the guitar, but you don't want to hear the vocal for whatever reason, you can only monitor the guitar and then you're only hearing one or the other. Number five, and I've been using it all the way through, and it's actually a really cool feature, and that is undo. But not only undo, but redo. Because a lot of folks sometimes tell me, Pete, I just did an epic recording. Let's, uh, let's just pretend. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll delete these out. Let's just pretend that you just did an epic guitar recording, yeah? So you've come in here and uh, we've recorded this. We'll record the guitar and the vocal. We've just done an amazing take. 
that's only two bars, but pretend that's the whole way through. We've just done this amazing take and we're just like, oh yeah, what, what am I doing here? And you tap on this, you're like, oh, I just hit undo. Oh no, it's gone. It's gone forever. Except it's not because all you need to do is tap and hold on the undo button and guess what? Redo. Yeah, this has been a game changer for a lot of folks because it's super easy to undo. And because you can undo multiple levels and you can just keep undoing, if you tap and hold now, you can actually redo. And it'll always let you redo the next level up to, I think, 10. I think it's maximum of 10 that you have there. But if you tap and hold, you can select to undo the last one or redo the last one. So if you do a whole bunch of undos and you find, you realize you've done something wrong and you've undone something you didn't want done, 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 and you want to redone, didn't do it, then you can tap that, tap and hold, tap and hold, and you've got your redo right there next to your undo. Bonus question number six that I get, six that many, is can you record professional sounds with GarageBand? Can you do professional recordings? Well, yeah, it depends on your definition of professional, but I 100% think you can because I've recorded an entire album in GarageBand on my iPhone and my iPad. I've recorded singles, I've recorded EPs. And if you wanna learn how to record using GarageBand on your iPhone or iPad, check out my GarageBand beginner's guide. You can just head on over to GarageBand, no, you can't, to studiolivetoday.com slash courses, and you'll be able to check out my GarageBand beginner's guide. Just $10, and you get to get five hours worth of all that stuff.